Hey everybody, this is the fourth here. And in this video, I will be showing you how the Fruity Delay 2 plugin works in FL Studio. Now, what a delay plugin does is creates echoes of your sound. So, right now, I have a snare running through the delay, which I'll let you hear. And now it has a few different parameters that you can adjust to get the delay sound you want. The first one is the input panning. And it doesn't actually change the panning of the dry signal, but it does change the panning of the signal that is input into the delay. So you'll hear that if I change this all the way left, the initial sound will stay in the center, but all of the delays will be panned to the left. So you can set that wherever you want that to be on the left and right spectrum. And, and you know, oftentimes you might just want to leave it in the center. And then over here you have the input volume, which just like the pan, it doesn't affect the dry signal, but it only affects the wet signal. So you'll hear if I turn it all the way down, you don't hear any delay. But if I turn it up a little bit, you can hear the delay a little bit, and so on. So this setting here is the default setting, and it's the same volume as the input. But if I turn it past this, the delays will actually start louder than the original input. Which can be a pretty cool effect. And then here you have a few options for your feedback. And the first are the feedback type. And you have normal, invert, and P pong. So the normal one just means it will create a normal delay, where invert will invert the panning. So if I keep it normal and have the panning to the left, you'll hear the delay in the left speaker. But if I invert it, you'll have the delay to the right speaker. So let's say my original snare sound was panned some to the left. So now you will hear the snare to the left, and the delay will be inverted. Which is a pretty cool effect. And then you also have ping pong mode, which means it will alternate the left and right channels with each delay. So if I pan it to the left, first it inverts it. So you'll hear the first delay in the right speaker, the second one in the left, the third one in the right, the fourth one in the left, and so on. So like this. Okay. So here you have the feedback level. And this adjusts how loud each recurring sound is in relation to the original one. So you'll hear right now it sounds like this. But if I turn the feedback volume down, you'll hear a bigger change in volume between each delay. Now the first delay stays on volume with this here. So you know, if I want the first delay to be softer, I can turn it down here. But you can hear as I increase the feedback volume, there's less difference between each hit, which results in there being more hits before you can no longer hear them. And if you turn the volume knob all the way up, it will repeat indefinitely. unless you turn it back down. Okay, so next to the volume, you have the feedback cutoff frequency. And you can hear that what that does is it filters the delays. And so lower values will have more of that low pass filter happening, where higher values will have less of it happening.
and you can hear that the cutoff changes with each delay, just like the feedback volume does. So I'll play that again for you. Now here you have your time settings for the delay. And the first one is the time. And this is set in relation to your tempo. So the default setting is three, which means three steps. So you'll hear if I play this, this is with the tempo. So if I change it to every three steps like this, it'll sound the same as the delay's time. But here it is, here's how three beat sounds in relation to the 4x4 four four tempo. Okay, so you can set this all the way to 16 steps, which is quite a while. Um, so you can set it anywhere between 16 steps and one tick. So, you know, a lot of times um, crash symbols will be set to four, which would be one beat. And now next to the time, you have your time stereo offset. So this will put a delay on one side of the stereo image. So if I have the knob to the right, it'll put that delay on the right. So here's how it sounds normally. And now if I put the knob a number of milliseconds right, you'll hear it'll sound different. And so you can do it to the right or you can do it to the left. So it can create some cool, you know, stereo delay, or it can just, you know, add to that ping pong effect. And finally, you have the dry level. And this determines how much of the original sound you will hear. So if you turn it up, it'll get louder. And you know, if you turn it down, it'll get softer. And you can even turn it all the way off. And turning it all the way off can be very useful if you're using the delay plugin on Ascend track. And you can see, you can watch it play, but you won't hear it until the delay starts. Okay. And that is the fruity delay. Thanks for watching my tutorial video. I hope you found it to be helpful. If you want to learn more, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can watch new videos as soon as I upload them. After that, check out the Beat School website. I'll have the link in the description. All my tutorials are organized on the site so that you can easily find what you need by browsing through the different categories. There are also a ton of awesome resources to help you in every aspect of music production. And if you want to help support me, you can buy any of my sample packs, preset packs, or project files for only $5 or less. This gets you some great sounds for a great price and allows me to spend more time making these tutorials and working on the website. Thanks again for watching my video and have a great day.